Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, how you doing out there today? Thank you for tuning in to this episode of The Last Science Show. Black History Month means we must honor black scientists. And today, I want to honor Janice Yvonne Lawson. Janice was an American chemical engineer who became one of NASA's computer programmers. Let's go, Janice. Lawson was born on February 22, 1930 in Santa Monica, California. Her parents were Hillard Lawson and Bernice Lawson. She attended Belmont High School and graduated in 1948. Lawson completed a bachelor's degree in chemical engineering at the University of California, Los Angeles in 1952. She was a straight A student and president of the Delta Sigma Theta sorority. Despite her qualifications, Lawson could not get work as a chemical engineer because of her race and gender. She responded to a JPL job ad for Computers Wanted that specified no degree necessary, but she recognized as code for women can apply. While it would not be an engineering position, it would put her in a lab. There was discussion about whether or not she should get the job, but Macy Roberts stood up for her. Lawson got the job and in 1953 was one of the first Jet Propulsion Laboratory employees to be sent to a training course at IBM. During her three weeks in the school, she became skilled in programming. She found her college calculus courses helpful as she learned speed coding, a computer language specifically built for the IBM 701 that was innovative in its use of floating point arithmetic, a strategy that allowed engineers and scientists to include very large and very small numbers in calculations and is now ubiquitous. Lawson was the first African-American hired into a technical position at JPL. She was promoted to mathematician in 1954. She became skilled at programming during the course, using a key punch and learning speed coding. Lawson lived in Los Angeles and would commute for over an hour to the Jet Propulsion Laboratory every single day. To do her work at JPL, Lawson wrote her programs with paper and pencil and then brought her notebook to a key punch, a device that looked like a small typewriter and that translated Lawson's handwritten programs into a series of holes punched into rectangular cream-colored cards. Lawson then fed her cards into the 701. The output came out neatly in the computer's included printer. She made sure to keep the original notebooks handy. She could always run the cards again, of course, but her handwritten notes were the real source code. It's difficult to imagine a time when computers didn't dominate laboratories, yet the women who heralded their revolution have largely been forgotten. Lawson finally became a chemical engineer, and while her career far outlasted that of the IBM 701, the programs they created together formed the basis for technology today. The programs the pioneers of JPL built have traveled across the universe, even in one case, leaving it all together. In 2014, Voyager 1 became the first man-made object to leave our solar system. But it wasn't just made by men. Stashed aboard the spacecraft's 40 kilobytes soaring through the space dust are the relics of a relationship between women and machines that span half a century. Lawson joined the Ramo Woolridge Corporation in the late 1950s. This organization, also known as TRW, was an American corporation involved in a variety of businesses, mainly aerospace, automotive, and credit reporting. It was a pioneer in multiple fields, including electronic components, integrated circuits, computers, software, and systems engineering, which means Lawson was still able to do what she loved and what she was great at doing. In many sources and references, Lawson is listed as one of the women, one of the few black women who brought us to the moon. She essentially served as a human computer, ultimately responsible for sending astronauts to the moon. Thank you, Janice. As we look back over history, we should all realize we would not have accomplished much of anything without the wisdom and knowledge of these great black leaders, these great black scientists. That's all for this episode of The Last Science Show. Continue to like, subscribe, comment, and share for more great content. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good science.
The first black scientist we are going to honor is George Washington Carver. George Washington Carver was an African-American scientist and educator. Carver is famous for many inventions, including a number of uses for the peanut. George Washington Carver was born enslaved and went on to become one of the most prominent scientists and inventors of his time, as well as a teacher of the Tuskegee Institute. Carver devised over 100 products using one major crop, the peanut, including dyes, plastics, and gasoline. Carver was most likely born in 1864, enslaved in Diamond, Missouri, during the Civil War years. Like many children of the enslaved, uh, the exact year and date of his birth are unknown. Carver was one of many children born to Mary and Giles, an enslaved couple owned by Moses Carver. A week after his birth, Carver was kidnapped along with his sister and mother from the Carver farm by raiders from the neighboring state of Arkansas. The three were later sold in Kentucky. Among them, only the infant Carver was located by an agent of Moses Carver and returned to Missouri. The conclusion of the Civil War in 1865 brought the end of slavery in Missouri. Moses and his wife Susan decided to keep Carver and his brother James at their house after that time. As she had been in high school, Jemison was very involved in extracurricular activities at Stanford, including dance and theater productions, and served as head of the Black Student Union. She received a Bachelor of Science degree in Chemical Engineering from the university in 1977. Upon graduation, she entered Cornell University Medical College and, during her years there, found time to expand her horizons by studying in Cuba and Kenya and working at a Cambodian refugee camp in Thailand. After Jemison obtained her MD in 1981, she interned at Los Angeles County slash University of Southern California Medical Center and later worked as a general practitioner. For the next two and a half years, she was the Area Peace Corps Medical Officer for Sierra Leone and Liberia, where she also taught and did medical research. Following her return to the United States in 1985, Jemison made a career change and decided to follow a dream she had nurtured for a long time. In October, she applied for admission to NASA's Astronaut Training Program. The Challenger disaster of January 1986 delayed the selection process, but when she reapplied a year later, Jemison was one of the 15 candidates chosen from a field of about 2,000. On June 4th, 1987, Jemison became the first African-American woman to be admitted into the NASA astronaut training program. After more than a year of training, she became the first African-American woman astronaut earning the title of Science Mission Specialist. 